I spotted a bit of Norway on Carol's map there. It was unseasonably, well, not unseasonably, it was very hot in Norway. Uh, the reason why I mention Norway is because, uh, for those of you who don't know, Louise has been there over the weekend, well, the last week or so, uh, preparing to take on this ludicrous race called the Norseman Extreme Triathlon, <laughs> which involves, well, amongst other things, you have to jump, you start off by jumping from the back of a car ferry into the, an in the icy dark. fjord. Yeah, into a fjord. Uh, then you swim about nearly two miles or so. Um, it's rather wonderful, actually, because you come round um, a corner and you see this bonfire on the beach that you swim to, then take a left turn, then get on your bicycle, uh, cycle about 112 miles. Just mostly, about, about 112 mostly uphill. miles. Yeah. And then a marathon. Um, it was an epic day, I think, is the best way of describing it. <laughs> Uh, quite a bit of um, support from Louise's family as well. Oh, yes. So we've made, we, we sent Graham Satchel, who's magnificent, along with you to film your, your journey. And the one thing I should say about this race is you can't do it unless you have support because nobody helps you along the way. So this is what happened. <sighs> this is not for you. <laughs> Nothing personal, but it's not. This is for people with fight, resilience, and minds tougher than their bodies. Four o'clock in the morning, and Louise gets a final good luck hug from her husband, Dave. The Norseman is the most extreme triathlon in the world. It starts with a jump into Hardangerfjord. This is the moment when I seriously question my life choices. Don't think, just jump. I'm shaking, I'm nervous, and I just kind of want to get in and get the first 100 metres done. That is the horn that signals the start of the Norseman proper. The swim is two miles long and Louise's strongest event. Come on, put well on, Louise, what well on, keep going, put well on. On the shore, Louise's support team, her dad, Patrick, daughter, Scarlett, and husband, Dave. As she finishes the swim, she is fourth in the women's race, 29th overall. Oh my gosh, that was amazing and quite scary. Lots of big, scary men with big elbows. Incredible. I think I might need another top. Drink some tea, eat something. Where am I going? Sure? Yeah, where am I going? Right. Okay. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. A great start. A really great start. So good. No, we're, uh, we're pleased. Ha! Ah, come on. It's so beautiful. And crazy. The cycle ride is more than 100 miles, most of it uphill. It is brutal. And this is hard. When you look at the view down there, it's like standing on the top of a ski slope. Louise's family are with her mile after mile, but she's also getting inspiration from the remarkable landscape here. I've never been to Norway, and I sort of imagined Norway would be kind of beautiful, but just look at this place. You know, when you're, when you're cycling on your own in the middle of nowhere, somewhere like this, it just gives you a sense of what an incredible, beautiful place we live in and what a lucky person I am to be sort of a really small part of that beautiful landscape. 134, Louise Minchin from Great Britain, Chester Triathlon Club, welcome. Well done. Oh, I just can't believe I've done that. I can't believe I've done it. Oh, oh, oh gosh, that's so delicious. I've started talking to myself in the last 20 K, just going, you are crazy. What are you doing this for? Because you look, sort of life high, is for living. Louise has now been on the go for just under 10 hours. It's blisteringly hot and she's starting to struggle. Why do I do what is a stupidly, ridiculous, challenging thing to do? I know that the only thing uh, that's going to get me 220 kilometres away from here 
is pretty oh. much myself. And that's an incredibly oh, empowering thing to do. Oh, so cool. Oh. I do know that I am resilient and my mind is tough. So yeah, resilience when things get really tough. I think I've learned a bit along the way. <laughs>'re pretty amazing at what point do you on that you've obviously done the the swim and then the yeah, 112 love, mile cycle which, which is was difficult really really hard there was two Where? at the beginning I climbed for two and a half hours at the start of that and then at what point during that run and that's a full marathon by the way if you just tuned in, a full marathon at the end of all that do you, do you, does your body just shut down at some point? Because you're so mentally, was, you've got to be so fine. strong to get through I was sort that. of okay until about um, 10 kilometres. And then what happened was, the one thing I had not trained for was the heat. And the heat just went straight, went up to over 30 degrees. And then things got really, really hard. So when that guy was there with the hose, I was incredibly grateful. But uh, without the support of my family, mm. that is not possible. I enjoyed your, your husband um, sponging your head. Oh, no, <laughs> and he did my feet as well. Absolutely And brilliant. also Louise raised loads of money for incredible charity for Mind, Mind as well. Yeah. So. Well oh, thank you so much for your messages, for your support. I really appreciate it. And, you know, go out there. You've got to try stuff that you don't think you can do. Go for it. But you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, you could just, like, you know, just go for a walk. 